welcome in Hyundai N, welcome in Thunder Hill. So uh, you heard about the heartbeat per minute, that's our N philosophy, our N vision. And I tried to explain a little bit to you from an yeah, engineering development point of view, how we, we do the heartbeat per minute, uh, that when you go out there on the racetrack, you, you get a little bit better understanding the philosophy, the character of the Velocity. So, the uh, history of Hyundai in the US, as you know, uh, we started in the early 90s and we were famous for value for money. And then we understood, okay, we have to focus a lot to improve our quality. And then the next big uh, activity was to improve the styling of our cars, that customers buy with their heart, not only with their brains. And now the next big pillar is performance. So we wanted to improve the driving performance of all Honda cars. And the plan is, and has been decided, okay, we do this by developing a high performance car. So we are really aiming very high and going in the segment, in the C segment, where all the hot hatches are, and to compete there, and to give us really and our engineers a high challenge then to, to demonstrate that Hyundai is able to compete in the most competitive hot hatch segment. So, and now I want to explain a little bit how we did this. The script of the N vehicles is pretty clear. The N is about the corner, the chicane on the racetrack. So at N, we love corners. That's our main focus. We're not going for top speed or for lap time. Driving fun in the corner, that's our key story. And so every Hyundai N car has to be a real <coughs> corner rascal, hungry for corners. That's our core story. But of course, every Hyundai N should also be your only car in some situation for younger people. So the everyday practicality. Use the Hyundai N car as your practical everyday sports car. That's the other side of an N vehicle. And then, of course, to make the final proof, every Hyundai N car has to be capable to drive on the racetrack. And that makes a big difference. As you might know, you have tested many cars, and there are many claims, oh, this is a, this is a track car, this is a high-performance car. But after two, three laps, the fun is over. The brakes degrade, the cooling degrades, the hot mode comes up. This will not happen on a Hyundai N car. It's very substantial. We put a lot of effort to make it racetrack capable. It's not a pretender. This is a real thing for track day people and so on. I want to go in detail now a little bit how we do this. And so to explain what our approach was, it is similar with developing a race car. Yeah? So in this different stages of racing, you have to start, then you have to break, you make the corner, mid-corner, you accelerate, and the fun starts all over. So first of all, we need a strong, powerful engine. But our focus for the engine development was not like peak torque or peak power. It was all about dynamic response. Yeah, if you're focusing on driving around the corner with the most possible fun, then you need a very responsive engine so that you can play with your car with throttle, throttle off, throttle on. That's very important, the dynamic response. And you can See this later on out there in the track, there's so many nice long corners here where you can play with the car, swaddle off, swaddle on, and how the car reacts to it. So this responsiveness, that is the key element of that engine. And it's, it's not a fancy high-performance engine, it's, it's, it's a solid Hyundai engine, and, but focus clearly all the application on dynamic response. And with the AM vehicles, uh, with the Veloster and we want to attract younger people, of course, and newcomers to the driving fun of high-performance cars. So we want to help them a little bit. So we developed a launch controller that the start for those that are not so experienced cannot work the clutch uh, artistry so so well. We give them some support with the launch controller. You can figure out later, and also to cover the different driving uh, situations. So we apply different applications to the engine. So we have a normal mode, we have a sport mode, and we have a very aggressive end mode, where the throttle response is a little bit different. And in the end mode, we do some special magic to support very fast shifting and keep the power going uh, after the shifting to keep more power into the next year. 
So getting off the line is important. So for those who are really not so much uh, relying on the launch control, we put a lot of, lot of effort also in the clutch. Yeah, so the, the way you operate the clutch, how you can sense the kiss point of the clutch. There we put a lot of efforts and we made a strong clutch. So it's, it's, it's a very reliable, strong clutch for those when they know the track they're driving and so on. They can rely on this. We also reinforced a little bit the transmission. So we have special uh, synchroring coatings uh, for really precise and notchy shifting. And uh, we worked a lot on the shifter itself. Yeah, it's a, sh it's a short shifter, it's very clear gate separation, so you get good feedback, the way it snaps in, those things are all very important, very precise, very direct, with good feedback about what's going on. So, accelerating the car down the straight, going to the first corner, then you come to the point, after all the shifting up, you need to shift down. And some of you probably are the master of heel and toe, but we want to attract the young guys, and they might not be that experienced with heel and toe. So also we give some support to the newcomers. And uh, so we develop the ref matching system, and it's uh, customizable, and you can also just switch it on and off, because the experts, some of you, might not like the heel and toe. And in the beginning of the development, to be honest, when I go out on the Nordschleife in the Hatzenbach, corner already, okay, forget it, I do it myself. <laughs> Nowadays, it's all different. I don't use my own heel and toe anymore. The car is much better than me. I give up on it. I can't beat it anymore. So, and maybe you can experience later on if you can do it more precise and better than the weather side. Yeah, so then coming to the first corner, downshifting, and then braking hard, you know, in front-wheel drive cars, there can be a lot of movement from the powertrain with a heavy brake. And so we worked a lot on the uh, powertrain uh, bushings. So the whole support system, we fine-tuned in a way that the car is not upset too much by the movement of the powertrain, but still we have a good isolation for our NVH because it should also be your everyday driver that you can go to your office or shopping or whatever. So that also got a lot of attention, and this is very important to make the driving enjoyable with all this dynamic potential that the car really has. So then we go, of course, to the corner with a lot of speed. We need to brake hard, and you can really brake hard here. So we put a brake to the first end car generation, which is not a typical high performance brake, where you spend a lot of money on Brembo brakes. The whole idea of the first generation Hyundai N-Car was really to keep the cost of the car down. That it's affordable, that it's accessible. We want the car out there in the market, on the roads, and that the people can enjoy it. And uh, it shouldn't be a fancy, expensive car. Yeah. So we used a lot of our own technology from Hyundai with our, with our supplier network, sister companies, and developed our own technology to the high performance level that we can compete at a lower cost of the car. And you will be surprised about the cost to fund factor we can show about later. So the brakes is very reliable, very robust system, floating caliper, all the sensitivity of fixed calipers, you know them very well, all the shutter and so on. This car is less sensitive yeah, and it's affordable. So if the track day guy, if he needs a new rotor after some time, this is not the fancy rotor where you pay tons of money just for rotors. This is Hyundai parts, they're affordable and reliable. To get this going, of course, we had big rotors, uh, special brake beds, and here today, uh, because the car is going all day and we didn't want to change the brake pad so much, we use our accessory brake pad, it's especially for the track day guys. So if people want to buy it, they can go to the dealer and they can order the the brake pad for the track day. So the guys, the cars that are running around the track, they have this special accessory pad. But if it was just you going to a track for a half a day driving, you would not necessarily need those brake pads. You can take the Velocity from the showroom. The brake is strong enough to enjoy really track day driving, and then you drive home in comfort. So this is, the cars are a little bit screening. That gives you an indication. Ah, oh, okay, this is the accessory brake. So the cooling was very important to 
manage this high level of brake performance. So we put a lot of effort in the development of brake cooling with the special deflectors, the air curtain, to extract all the hot air very effectively from the brake system. So brakes have to be important. So we are down now to the first corner, breakdown, and then under braking also, I think it's very important to have a good, comfortable feeling for the car. You have to have confidence in the car. So the aerodynamic development was also clearly focused that you have a good sense of what's going on with your car and that you can trust it. You know, so the aerodynamic was not developed to have the, safest, the fastest lap time. It was clearly developed with more downforce a little bit in the rear than in the front, that you always have some good, safe feeling in the high-speed corners. When you go around Nordschleife, yeah, in Flugplatz or Schwedenkreuz, this is when your heart really goes like, ooh, you know, like this. The car should feel planted in the rear safely and not giving you like scary moments. We want the heartbeat going up because of enjoyable driving and not because of being scared. Yeah? This is a positive heartbeat. This is the philosophy for our aero balance. So, and uh, it's important to understand our car, what that is. Yeah? When we talk aerodynamics, of course, we have to talk about cooling. And cooling, we put tons of effort to make sure the consistency on track driving is really there to make the racetrack capability. So we have a very powerful cooling package. The best spot, of course, goes for the charge air, for the charge air intercooler. Also, we have good dynamic response. Yeah, if you're heating up charge air too much, then you, you get in trouble. Dynamic response just goes south too much. This is important. That you have this good instant control of the car, of the powertrain. So the other important thing is when we go down to the first corner and we do the turn in, that the body in white for a high performance car is very stiff and strong. For me, I've been doing high performance car for quite some time. The body in white is the most important chassis part. Many people might not think like this, but all of this nice suspension, they can only work nicely if the body in white structure is really strong and stiff. The good thing is, in Hyundai, all our Hyundais, they have very strong body and lights. We have our Hyundai steel, we use a lot of high strength steel in our Hyundai cars, and so we do on the Veloster. And we didn't need so much changes to bring the whole car, the whole package, to this performance level that you can experience later on. We added uh, some few welding spots in the body shop, and then we put some reinforcement struts in the floor pan area and for the attachment of the upper McPherson strut. But for the, for the normal car that you drive here today, you wouldn't look those things so much. You would barely feel any difference if this was in the car or not. But we have also two cars out here on uh, Pirelli Trofeo cup tires. And their grip level is a lot higher than on the normal tire. But we also put very early in the development stage already slick tires to the car to make sure if the track day guy he wants to go on slick, that the Veloster end is also capable to manage slick tires, which have a lot of grip. And then these things make a difference. Because the tires are so grippy, you can put so much load on the car, and then these things matter. So it's stiff, the house is very good, it's very stiff. Then chassis we changed a lot, so it's a, almost a complete new front axle with rack mounted steering system, the kinematics, everything is tuned for good feedback and good linearity, instant steering response, good steering position. We call it end power sense axle. We allow a certain level of torque steer because torque steer can be a very good thing. It gives you a sense of the power you put down on the road. So you might feel a little bit of torque steer here and there. That's not a problem, that's a feature. It's a good information for the driver about what's going on. So also with the, the roll axis, we developed in a way, so we raised the roll center at the front, we reduced it in the rear, that we can afford a little bit softer springs in the front. It's very good for mechanical traction. The mechanical traction of this car is really, really good. I mean, we have the limited slip in those performance package cars here, but the standard Veloster has no limited slip. 
And we don't have it here today, but later, hopefully, you will test it also, the standard Veloster, and you will be surprised about the grip level of that car, even without the limited slip differential. So it's very stiff everything for the good precision. Yeah? So we have a very high camera stiffness in the car. It's a key element for precise driving on high grip level. On the rear axle, we went through the same routines. So we changed roll center, stiffened up everything a little bit. <coughs> Elastic kinematics, very important to make the car playful. So if you play with the car, throttle on, throttle off, immediate, nicely to control, turn in, the car is very playful. All these things you can figure out later on on the track. So steering, of course, key element for precise turn in, control the car. It, it's a nice steering box. Again, it's a big steering box with a big strong motor. Also then, for testing, we put the slick tires on the car. We drove the Nordschleife. If you've got long Füchsröhre in Nordschleife, and down there you make a turn, so many cars get a sticky steering then. They're just at the limit especially with this electric steering systems. You don't need to worry on the Veloster N, even you put the slicks on the car. There's no, no stiff steering, it's really a very strong steering. And we added some <coughs> yeah, software magic to the steering. Uh, so we have some corner acceleration compensation to balance nicely, like things like torque steer and so on, that you always have a good sense of what's going on. <coughs> Yeah, so the key, other key element, of course, is the tire. And together with Pirelli, uh, we have a representative from Pirelli here today. Welcome. So we developed a whole new tire, uh, the 19-inch tire you can find on the cars here today. And it's the same story. This is not the tire for the fastest lap time. This is not the tire, the cup tire for the professional or very experienced driver. This is a very good all-round tire. Yeah. It is good in the rain, it's good in the cold weather, and we developed it also that it has a stiff sidewall because we know in the eastern part, in Michigan area in the US, there's big potholes and you can pinch cut tires easily. So this is different from the I30N tire, for example, for Europe, but we balanced the whole tuning of the Veloster N for this tire. And uh, yeah, we were in the beginning, we were thinking about, yeah, 20 inch, that would be great. It's great maybe for the looks and maybe yeah for the track only, but there's this other part of an end car, the everyday practical sports car, and then you will appreciate that it's this tire with a very robust sidewall and it's a good all-rounder. And the tire wear also is not fully crazy that below 10,000 miles you already need new rubber on the front axle. And it lasts on the track and it's fast on the track, you will find out later on. It's a very precise tire. So then, when you go track driving, there are tracks with high banking corners, so then several cars go crazy, ESC system, just get out of control, cars slow down. So we made a special logic, even for the carousel in Nürburgring, which has extreme banking, there's no problem, all covered, and we have some special features for anti knockback for the pads and so on, that you cover all these areas of high performance driving. Yeah, then, the fun machine, the electronically controlled limited slip differential, we call it end corner carving differential. It's our own development with our sister company, VIA, from Korea. And uh, yeah, we put this standard in the performance package and we call it end corner carving differential because later you can find out when you are like mid corner and you just floor it and it puts you nicely through the corner. This carving effect was much more important than improving any lap time. It's a little bit faster, of course, but the, 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 the focus was to make it a little bit more sensational, the way you feel it, the car, yeah, carves you through the corner. So, and then we have a very sophisticated shock absorber system in the car with three drive modes, but every mode is, is active, is adaptive according to the sensor signals, we have a lot of input, we have extra five sensors, steering, throttle, and so on, brakes, so, and we have nice features to set it up to tune it, so we have independent roll control, front axle, rear axle, so we can do some nice tuning with this car. You can find that on the racetrack, we have the different modes available, but also when you go out on the road, the road track, 
uh, street course is also very interesting to, to see how yeah, good the ride comfort can still be with the same car which is performing nicely on the track. Then the other adjustable feature we have, this is clearly for the motion, for the fun to drive, is the adjustable exhaust flap. And we have also a sound generator in the car, and we have different modes to adjust this. So on our steering wheel, you find the two, blood, the two blue buttons, and there you adjust the different modes. And uh, so we have N mode, which is sound-wise the most spectacular one, and we think this is an important part of yeah, having fun to drive and to get the right heartbeat per minute. <laughs> yeah, so we tested everything already very early. We took our prototypes, or the, the predecessor car, out on the Nürburgring into the 24 hours race, the most challenging race in the world. So we tested in 2016 the powertrain. In 2017 we put two pre-production cars into the 24 hours and they were just running like a Hyundai. Okay, one car, car got an accident, that can happen. The other car had no accident, it just got fuel, brakes, tires and drivers. It was just going and going like a Hyundai. Very successful test, so everybody happy, and the car was ready to go out to sell it to our customers. So, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. The track is very challenging, so keep it safe, and yeah, enjoy, and make sure your heartbeat goes up. <laughs>